Hey, I'm Melanie Johnson, along with my co-host, Jen Foster. We are both 13-time best-selling authors. We've published over 2,500 books and made all of our authors number one bestsellers. We own Elite Online Publishing. If you want to become a best-selling author, look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Now, welcome to the podcast that shares secrets from top industry experts that show you how to get lasting success and results. This is the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hey, welcome to another great episode. It's Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster. Hey, Jen, how's your day going? It's awesome. It's a great day today. Oh, it's always a great day when we're on our podcast. That's how I feel about it. And uh, you know what? Jen and I's story is similar in a very small way to Fran Dunaway, who's joining us today. She had a side hustle. So all of you that have a little side hustle going turned into this huge, successful business that is just blowing it away. And of course, before our interview, I checked her out and um, I wanted to buy everything on the website. I was like, oh my gosh, her clothes are so freaking adorable. So she has this amazing, I guess you would call it leisure wear, underwear line, swimwear line, apparel. Um, so we're gonna talk about her journey to success, what you should know about transitioning from a side hustle to your main hustle, and how do you make that successful? And what are the pitfalls and the things that she learned along this way. Fran, welcome. Thanks so much for coming today. Well, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, Fran, start with kind of your journey of how you got into this side hustle and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I like to say that uh, we started this underwear company because I wanted a cool button-up shirt. And uh, that is actually where the journey began. Uh, I was frustrated with the lack of really nice shirt options like you can find in the menswear department, uh, like a Robert Graham or Ben Sherman, fun details under the collar and the cuffs and just something with personality, uh, but that would fit my body. And so that was the side hustle. We were in a little one car garage. Uh, it was my wife and I, then, then girlfriend, now wife. And, uh, and so, yeah, so we just started this whole thing and um, we decided that uh, we call it tomboy because we thought that was cute. And in order to pay for the shirts, uh, we, what we had to do was actually uh, launch a Kickstarter campaign. And it was during the Kickstarter campaign that we realized that the name was resonating in a very powerful way. And so we had an instant brand with instant brand recognition. And so then it became a question of, what do we do with this? This is much bigger opportunity potential than just a shirt, which we still have requests for to this day. Awesome. I love that. So it was really about you wanted a product, but it turned into a whole brand and following. So you got your audience, which is the first thing you need when starting a big company like this. So that's awesome. That's great. So tell us kind of from there how it evolved into all the other, you know, all the other lines. Sure. Well, we quickly realized that uh, our customers know best. And so when they started asking for us to make boxer briefs for women, we listened and uh, we went down that path. And at the same time, when we finished the, when we actually finished the Kickstarter campaign, we put our logo on things and those were selling well, but this pitter patter, the constant drumbeat of boxer briefs, boxer briefs, we didn't realize no one had made them. And so we, I did some research, went on to Nordstrom.com, typed in boxer briefs for women and up came a pair of Spanx. And we were pretty sure that was not what our customer was looking for. Yeah. So we found an amazing person that uh, knew, knew how to manufacture and source that had 30 years of experience that joined our team. And uh, she set out to make the most comfortable pair of boxer briefs uh, at the time for women it turns out if you get the fit and the quality right it fits everybody type and so uh, now we are gender neutral underwear and swimwear clothing company so we're pretty excited about that i love that so what happened after i mean it's it's um, challenging to come out with new lines how did you know how many different SKUs to have how fast did that happen how and then walk us through the building of your team to do all this well, let's be clear, Naomi and I didn't know a knit from a woven, nor did we know a balance sheet from a P&L. So we had a lot of learning to do. And uh, so it was just a journey really of finding the right people that we could uh, pester, uh, take out for coffee or drinks and uh, pick their brains and, and find out uh, all the things we didn't know. Uh, but you hit on a particular uh, sore spot, you know, as we, as we were growing, we kept when we introduced underwear, we, we actually pre-sold them and uh, 
because we didn't have the money to pay for them. And they sold out in two weeks before they arrived. So uh, six months later, we had tripled our revenue. So we were pretty sure that we were probably an underwear company at that point. But to, to kind of turn completely into that, and that's when we started having inventory challenges. And uh, we didn't know that there was a, a job known as a merchandiser uh, that could actually come in and solve that problem. So that was a lot of our early bickering around how much to order and how much, uh, how much we might need to keep in. And in fact, when we did hire our first contractor uh, merchandise person, she came in and, and uh, did a count and was looking through the data and said, gosh, you guys have a 75% sell-through rate. And we said, oh, is that good? It sounds good. And she said, well, that's why your shelves are empty. So, um, so now it, it, it's very compli complex mathematics of how, what the right balance is, but uh, we've come a long way since then. Yeah, and those learning curves, I think, is what pushes you to the next level and the next level. I know for, for us, it's like, who do we hire? When do we hire them? So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it, and it's also, I think, a balance of, of uh, continually assessing where you are and, and what you need, what the company needs at, at a certain time, because it really drastically changes as you grow and as you add competencies and as you learn. Uh, kind of what direction you're going in. So it's a it's a continual challenge to be reevaluating and, and making decisions that are the right thing for the company to to grow and go forward. Yeah, you get a new set of problems with each stage, right? You think, oh, once we get to here, it'll be great. Everything will be smooth. But then you inherit a whole new set of problems with that and challenges that you have to overcome. And I love you also hit on um, taking people to coffee to get free information. Like, what do I do? <laughs> so it really says a lot to mentorship is very important. Um, and I tell women, if you don't feel like you have the connections to do that, or someone's not willing to do that for you, if you own a phone, you say I have no resources, almost everybody owns a phone, you can get on YouTube and you can search almost anything. How do you read a profit and loss statement? How right. should I source merchandise? I mean, you start doing that. It's better to have someone in person that you can give that phone call to and get that two cents of advice from along the way is really good. So, all right. So what are some of the challenges? You're growing, you're adding SKUs, you're getting advice as you're going. Um, <clears throat> what were some of the pitfalls during that time? Did you have to add people to your team and uh, hire different people too? We are continually, uh, yes, we, we, we have, we hired new people. Last year we did a a very, um, we raised our series B round of financing. And so that has really upped the game. I'm, I then was able to go away from my full-time job, which had been fundraising. And now I'm learning how to be a CEO. And so that presents its own challenges and it's been a really exciting time uh, in terms of, of uh, the growth of the company, but yeah. also just uh, looking at how you can continue to be efficient and lean, but, uh, but, but know that you're growing your competencies. And so it's, it's, a, it's a fine balance, it's a continual struggle. And uh, we added a, a lot to, of people to our team last year and uh, we, we've done some reshifting in terms of the way the organization runs and uh, always, always looking into how to make improvements. Yeah, so you told us a little bit how you start on Kickstarter and you built your audience and you know, you're selling out, but tell us a little bit about how you're marketing now and how you're getting the word out now. Well, we have a marketing team, a lean marketing team that is really focused on uh, digital marketing is kind of one arm of the company. And then we've got a, a small, uh, smaller team that's working on the brand piece of the company, which is more content. But the digital marketing team, uh, basically uh, any inbound uh, kind of people and then outbound our email. And we're reevaluating our st strategy right now, actually, because uh, we're lean leaning away or uh, weaning ourselves off of Facebook uh, because it's becoming much more competitive and hence more expensive and ineffective and looking into other avenues to get more on uh, other channels. So we're really expanding our channels right now. Yeah. Tell like us a little bit about that. Like, are you doing Instagram or are you leaning towards TikTok? Are you leaning towards, where are you going on the other platforms? Well, it's funny. Uh, Lizzo posted uh, her dancing in our underwear on TikTok and we were just passing it around this morning. Uh, so... 
Uh, well, we are, we have a Pinterest. We've started advertising on Pinterest. That's something new for us. And we're also looking at yeah, absolutely podcasts. So we're doing some uh, radio ads and uh, doing some more print ads uh, that are more specific into certain audiences. And uh, Apple, Apple has some uh, new advertising platforms that we're excited about. And so just looking at, at different ways that we can kind of leverage other channels. Yeah, we're big on uh, creating content and then putting it everywhere, right? If you can have it in one place, make sure it's everywhere that you can have it and, and finding those places. And podcasts are a great way to spread your, your message as well and getting to know you. So how do you struggle? We had a conversation with um, a client yesterday and the question is, who is the brand? Is the brand Tomboy X? Or are you and Naomi the brand? Like, who do you promote? Do you promote both at the same time? So what is your feeling about that? You know, this, this company, we are here primarily because of our customers. We stepped into a white space that no one had ever been in before. And that was what became very apparent to us early on. Um, not only did we have an instant brand, but I've been an activist my whole life. And so it, it, it became really apparent that uh, was, we felt responsible to our community and to the broader community. Uh, when we created the brand, we wanted the brand not to focus on trying to tell you how to be cool, but wanting to celebrate how cool we think you already are. And it was just coincidence and timing that we were kind of caught the Me Too movement, the body positivity, which would have been at the core of the values that we had going into making the company and it was important to us. So our values are very, very much the DNA of, of the company in terms of how we treat people, um, our sustainability practices, as well as uh, uh, everything that we do and, and how we treat our employees and factory workers. So all of that is top of mind in terms of who we are, but we are only here to serve the, uh, our customers and the community in a, in a way that we think is, is authentic to who we are from uh, the inside. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I noticed that from your website. I get, got that feeling from your website. And even just looking through the clothes and through the different things you have, I, that's one thing that I've always struggled with is I find something I really like that's cute, but it's in like the junior section and it doesn't fit me, right? <laughs> so I have to, I, I love that you have all sizes, that all body shapes, all body sizes. That's so funny. And we got an email. We share a lot of emails from customers and we got an email this morning from a 70 year old customer who was over the moon excited that uh, even though she's uh, in the plus size category that she can uh, get up in the morning and put underwear on that fits her that have dinosaurs on it. So yeah. uh, we, we like to bring that play in. And uh, I, I think that's important to our customers as well. Yeah, when you go to Tomboy X, the, the visual that you see looks like the women that I see when I walk out on the street. It's like real women are represented. It's not just this tiny little segment. I'm like, okay, these look like people I know. I, I, these are my friends that are here. You know, it's, it's such a different thing that, that you represent that, that I love you have that niche that you're doing it. What advice would you give to someone starting a new business? Oh boy. Um, you know, I think that, that what we touched upon earlier in terms of a mentor, finding someone, and actually I, we were lucky enough to get two mentors. I have one that uh, has now become a very close friend, uh, that she was one, that person that you, when you're on the ledge or you need to be spoon fed the next thing, she's not going to overwhelm you. Uh, but always positive and up. And then I also had one that was always like questioning and skeptical. And so I loved being able to balance the two of those and play the two of those off of each other in a very fun way. Um, so it depended on the day. If I needed a pick me up, I knew to call Deb. If, if I wanted to reality check, I knew to call Renee. And so that was, that's kind of the balance that I had, but finding someone that has done what you're trying to do that, uh, can be a, a, a real value add for the way you think about things. Yeah, that's great. Well, tell us, tell us one of the toughest days that you've had as being an entrepreneur. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, I, I think that we're kind of uh, in the midst of it uh, right now in terms of unknowing. Uh, I don't know when this will air, but uh, this whole coronavirus coming down on us and and not knowing what the economic impact is going to be. And, 
And right now we're looking at uh, restaurants closing and people being laid off by the hundreds on a daily basis here in Seattle. So it's, it's a pretty scary time right now. So mm -hmm. it's just hard to know what's the best thing and the right thing to do for the business. Yeah. So I, I think that's an ongoing, ongoing right now moment. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's uncertainty. And so I always tell uh, my kids and as a business owner ourselves, it's like, okay, there's always, there's always an upside to a downside, right? It's always about how to position yourself and adjust to the market. It's not necessarily taking advantage of the market, but it's taking uh, a look at the market and what's going on and how does your business or things fit into all that. I was telling my kids, so we're going to see this whole trickle down effect where people can't pay their electric bill, their plumbing bill, their rent, their mortgage, their car payment, and that all trickles down. I don't know what's going to happen on the back end if there's going to be government support, but people are going to lose their cars. People are going to have their houses foreclosed again. It's going to look like 2009 and 2010 a little bit. So, and for those people that are in a cash position, they can take advantage of those things. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's all cyclical. So where your business fits into that, where are the opportunities? How can you help people? Um, how can you donate your services to help other people that are in need? So it, it's just all taking, um, seeing where you fit in that puzzle when these things happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think acting decisively and quickly is, is critical. And so that, that's right where we are. And I think you're right. Those with the cash reserves uh, that can, that can uh, survive uh, can, can benefit, but uh, you have to make some hard choices. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, one thing that I know is that we are, we're always faced with, with adversity, right? I mean, stuff's going to happen, whether it's the coronavirus or some other thing, right? There's something that's going to happen. So what is it that pushes you and keeps you moving forward? A hundred percent customers, uh, really. We, we just love hearing from people and knowing we're making a difference in their lives on a, on a regular basis. And that, that means the world. Uh, we, we get emails and calls and texts from people every single day that that are being impacted about by the, the good work and the not only the product i mean our product is exceptional because of the attention to detail and and what, what how much we care about the right fit and quality but it's mm -hmm. just having options that people have never had before and uh and i think that that's really empowering to people and, and we want people to feel comfortable and confident in who they are stepping out into the world because i think that a lot of brands uh, somehow bring up the opposite of that because they have these uh, beauty standards and these yeah. body standards and all of these things that we're continually as women hammered with. And I, I think that that's just, uh, it's, it's, it's not a solution. It's, it's part of the problem. And so it's really important mm -hmm. that, uh, that there's a brand that uh, is celebrating and, and uh, helping you feel confident. And I'm really proud to, to be that brand. You're changing the conversation, you know, the, 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 the women brand underwear clothing conversation, which I love. Yeah. All right. So what do you wear? Are you wearing dinosaurs? Or are you wearing? <laughs> Gosh, it's funny because I can always tell you exactly which one I put on this morning. I put on the moon print. So uh, the phases of the moon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Well, tell us where we can go to find you, to find your website and to get more information and learn sure. more. Yeah, it's just tomboyx.com. And uh, you can also find us on Instagram at tomboyx. Uh, Twitter is Tomboy Exchange, And uh, we've got uh, different things uh, coming in the future. We we're working a lot on content and, and building out uh, other ways that we can communicate about who we are and, and what we're doing. But uh, we're, we're uh, easy to find, tomboyx.com. Terrific. Thanks so much for coming on today, Fran. We really appreciate it. And thank you for creating beautiful, fun um, underwear that we can all wear and enjoy. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting my first pair. Thank you both. I can't wait to hear which ones you buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so subscribe to our podcast. We always love to hear from you. Um, we have terrific guests that we learn from every single time. So you're not going to want to miss it. And when you subscribe, you get notifications. That's the beauty of that. So um, come join us every week. We are here and we will see you next time. Bye. Make it a great day. And don't forget to wear fun underwear that makes you feel great. Yeah. Oh, and also I forgot if you're going to write a book, make sure you contact us at Elite Online Publishing. We're here to help you write your story and tell your story for your business or your personal story and make you a bestseller. See you next time.
Are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.